Are you planning to create RAG applications which utilize PDFs as their external data source? Well, one of the challenges that everyone faces is getting the right quality of data from the PDF documents. It is here that extracting data from PDF becomes extremely crucial. What if I tell you there is an amazing API that has been created by Gradient, which is a Gradient PDF API that is fairly accurate in extracting all the text from a PDF. And then in this video, I'll show you how you can use the extracted text to basically create RAG application using Llama Index. So without wasting any further time, let's kickstart the code part of the video. It is very recently that I started using Gradient's Accelerator Block API for PDF extraction. And trust me when I say this, I have been nothing short of amazed while using this entire solution. So in this part of the video, I'll try to compare or I'll try to bring out the advantages of using Gradient's Accelerator Block API for PDF extraction over the already existing PDF extraction solutions. So let's begin with the import and the installation section. I also plan to use a PDF extraction API to extract data and then show you how you can build a RAG based application out of it, which is where I also require Llama index for this entire video. So I'll quickly install the necessary modules that are required for this particular activity. Now that the installation is done, let's move forward to the import section. So I'll quickly run these two cells to import all the necessary modules that I require. In order to access the amazing PDF extraction API by Gradient, you require the workspace ID as well as the access token. I've created multiple videos in terms of how you can kind of get access to a workspace ID as well as an access token. So I'll add the link to the previous videos in the description section of this current video. Feel free to check that out. So I currently have my gradient access token and workspace ID here in my Google Collab secrets. So this is something that I'll kind of import directly from here to the environment variables that I've created here. So I'll quickly run the cell. The next thing that I do is I create an instance of the class gradient and I kind of assign it to a variable gradient. This is something that we'll require going forward as well. So I'll quickly import this in memory as well. In the first part of the video, I want to show you how amazing Gradient's Accelerator Block API for PDF extraction is. So in this part, what I'll do is I'll do a side by side comparison, wherein I'll kind of compare Gradient's Accelerator Block API against the PDF Miner library. So the first thing that I've done is I've basically created a function that helps me extract all the text that is part of a PDF page using the PDF Miner library. So I'll quickly run this particular cell to import this particular function in memory. I firstly want to show you a PDF file. To do a thorough comparison between the libraries that I've just mentioned, this is the PDF file that I am kind of currently utilizing. And I can kind of do this entire analysis for the entire PDF, but there's no merit in kind of going over the entire PDF. So I'll stick to this particular page for the text extraction quality. So this is the page that I'll consider for both the libraries to perform on. And the next piece of comparison will be on this particular tabular data. So these are the two different sets of pages that I want to validate the results on. Now that I've shown you the PDF file, I have already uploaded the PDF file into this particular Google Collab session. The file name is sample underscore PDF dot PDF. What I do next is I kind of save this particular location of the file into a variable file underscore lock. So I'll quickly run the cell. Now we have all the background work done. I have the PDF file ready with me. I have a function to extract text from the pages that exist using PDF miner. How do we plan to extract text using gradients? PDF API is what I'll show you after some time. But the first thing that I'll show you is how can you extract text from the PDF miner function that I've just created. Now, if you remember the first page that I showed you, which was text only, what I do is I want to extract the text from this particular page. So this is the piece of code that I'll kind of utilize. Now I specify pages to extract as zero 
and all the extracted text that I want to extract from this particular page will be saved into this particular variable which is extracted text. So I'll quickly run this particular cell. So here is the output from the PDF minor library. One of the drawbacks that you kind of don't assess in the first go is PDF minor does not provide any JSON structure in its output. So it's unable to provide the underlying document structure in any given situation. So it will give you a text response in a very free flowing manner, but you cannot count upon the accuracy or the structural integrity of the PDF file when it kind of gives you the output as well. Now I'll go forward and I'll show you how gradient performs in the PDF extraction task. The extraction for the entire PDF is a one line command. All I have to say is gradient.extract PDF. I have to pass in the exact file location and that's it. So I'll quickly run this cell to get all the results into the variable result. So we've extracted all the text that exist in this particular PDF file. Now let me run the command type of result of pages. It's basically a list. Let's see how big the list is. So it has 93 list elements. Now I want to look at the text that has been extracted from the eighth page. So I'll quickly run this particular command, which is result of pages of seven. And here is the output. Now here, if you look at the output, the output is fairly accurate. Secondly, the output is in a JSON format. So if you're planning to create a production ready solution that can extract text from a PDF, and if you are worried in terms of how the overall text would be structured, then look at this particular output. This is a very structured output that can be used for the other say scripts that you've written to extract the data from this particular PDF or this particular key value pair, and then utilize it going forward. Now you might be wondering the output has slash ends, etc. But again, if you do a simple P print, you will have a very pretty output. And again, all of this is a very structured output, which you can kind of utilize in form of a JSON response as well. So, so if I do a simple print of result of pages of seven of text, then this is the output that I'm getting. The raw output is form of a dictionary where you have key value pairs. And if you just print out the results, you will get the result wherein the structure is preserved. This is why the gradients PDF API is so amazing to use. I'll give you one more example in terms of how amazing it is. So let's go forward. If you remember the second page, this page is a tabular page. PDF miner is entirely incapable of extracting the relevant data when the data is in form of tables. I'll show you how and why. Okay. And here is the output of the data that is the tabular data that I've just showed you. So there is no coherence in terms of the data that is extracted out. It is extracting out the text, but there is very little understanding of the structure of the table here. I don't know what this particular number. So for example, here is a numbers that I have. I really don't know what this number indicates. So if you have PDF documents with a lot of tabular structure, then gradients PDF API will come in really handy and I'll show you how and why let's move forward. Again, given that we've already extracted all the page results using one line of code, I'll show you the eight page output, which is something like this. Again, the advantage of using gradients PDF API is that it gives you a JSON like response. So what gradients PDF API is able to understand now is there is a table like structure and it kind of gives you a demarcation of the table rows for a particular row. It will give you the cell entries and with every passing row, it will kind of keep giving you that particular entry as well. So for example, if I want to extract the first row output, then all I have to do is I have to traverse this JSON response and get the output. So if I show you the first row, this is the output. So here is where you have net sales and you have values of 2023, 2022, 
2023 again and 2022. Now, if I go to the next row, this is the result that I have. So again, if you have a standard table like structure, then you can kind of use the JSON response to create a looping logic and create the entire structure in form of an Excel file or in form of a SQL database in, in terms of how you want to save that particular, say data, PDF data into a SQL or a tabular like structure. So this is the power that I wanted to show you using Gradient's PDF extraction API. Now we are all amazed by how amazing Gradient's PDF extraction API is. But can I perform retrieval augmented generation using this particular PDF API? The answer is yes. What I'll show you now is a simple example of firstly taking a simple PDF file. So I have the attention is all you need paper in form of attention.pdf file already uploaded in my Google Collab session. So the location of the file, which is currently the working directory is saved into a variable called as file path. So I'll pass this particular PDF again through this amazing function called as extract PDF from gradient and I'll store the results into the variable result again. So I'll quickly run this. Now again, this has to be a list and the list will have say X number of pages. In case of the attention paper, it has around 11 pages. Now what I do next is I save all the text from this particular PDF into individual text files and all of these text files will reside in a folder called as output. So this is what I'm achieving using this piece of code. So now when I show you the folder structure again, I have the output here and I have all the page wise data saved into different text files. So here now I'll be using the Llama 2 chat model for chatting with my PDF. So I'll kind of quickly create a variable called as LLM. I'll go through the output folder and I'll load all of the text files into the variable document. Using gradient embeddings, I'll convert all the individual pages or individual text files into embeddings. So what I do here is I call the gradient embedding function. I pass in my access token and workspace ID and I also specify the embedding model. All of this is again saved into a variable called as embed underscore model. Now I pass in all of the variables into the settings variable which is settings dot embed model equal to embed model, settings dot LLM equal to LLM and settings dot chunk size equal to 1024. Now here, given this is a simple example, I'm not using a vector database. I'm using the local version of Llama index. So here I define the index and query engine. And now I query the query engine with a question that is what is dot product attention? If this would have been a vector database, then the response would have been faster. But again, I wanted to stick to a simpler example for this video, which is where this is the response that I'm getting. So based on the new context provided, here's the refined answer to the query. So here you have what is scaled dot product attention. Well, this is something that I wanted to demonstrate today. I wanted to show you how amazing Gradient's PDF API is and how you can start using it to create amazing RAG applications. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do like the content that I create on my channel, it would be super motivating if you can press the subscribe button and also press the bell icon to be notified for amazing videos on data science, machine learning, deep learning and generative AI. Thank you so much for watching the video.